So far, we've talked about the case of homopolymers, where the polymer chain is composed of only one repeat unit. Copolymers are another important class of materials where the polymer chain is now made up of two or more different repeat units. And the idea is that you can then produce uh, a material whose properties have attributes from each of the two different repeat units. They may have individually different properties, but when combined in a copolymer, then you can produce a material that has properties that are somewhere in between. And so the question is, how do you control the relative contribution uh, from each of these different repeat units to the finished product? So what I want to do here uh, is just briefly give you a flavor for how we think about uh, these issues associated with synthesis of copolymers. Styrene butadiene rubber is one example of a material that is produced with copolymerization. So here you have a, a soft a deformable component and you'd like to increase its mechanical strength, maybe make it stiffer. Uh, and so this is done through copolymerization, styrene acrylonitrile and vanillidine chloride vinyl chloride, which you might be familiar with under the trade name Saran, uh, are other examples of uh, commercial copolymers. Now, let's think about this. Uh, at least as a starting point in the context of free radical polymerization. And we know that this process can be divided into three steps, initiation, propagation, and termination. So in the context of copolymerization, actually, we're going to focus on the propagation step because that's really the one that's going to be altered uh, during copolymerization. And the reason for that is that now there's four possibilities for what can happen during the propagation step. Remember before we had one possibility, a growing chain, an active chain uh, with this radical active site that's indicated by the red dot, adds a monomer with some rate constant, which before we called the propagation rate constant, to form another growing chain uh, that is a, where its length is increased by one monomer unit. But now we have some other possibilities for what can happen. This growing chain with monomer one at the end can add monomer two because now we have two different monomers if we're thinking about uh, two component copolymerization. Uh, so now we have the same growing chain, but the monomer unit that's active at the end uh, that contains the active site uh, is monomer two. And we can think of the same things happening uh, in chains that initially have the active site on monomer two at the end of the chain. Those can add either monomer one to become an active chain with monomer one uh, at the end, uh, or add monomer two to have an active chain uh, with monomer two at the end. And in principle, each of these steps, uh, each of these four processes can have its own rate constant. So we need to account for this when we analyze the kinetics associated with this process. So as a starting point, we're going to make some assumptions. And one of the assumptions is that we're going to ignore what are called penultimate effects. So penultimate means like the second to the last uh, component. So basically, uh, what we're saying is that uh, what happens to the uh, active site uh, at the end of the chain is not influenced by whatever the monomer unit was uh, that's prior to that on the polymer chain. So in other words, uh, this chain that has uh, active site on monomer one at the end with monomer one immediately behind it behaves in the same way as a chain with the active site on monomer one, but that has monomer two behind it. So we're gonna ignore any of these kind of effects. And you know those could come into play, as you could imagine, in terms of uh, stereochemistry about how things are added, uh, but we're not going to consider those kinds of effects. So in terms of this process, then, we have our, uh, our four possibilities. And let's think about what could contribute to production or consumption of a chain with an active site associated with monomer one. So we can see that this process, uh, so this process, we start with a chain that has monomer one with an active site at the end. It adds another monomer one and then yields again, a chain with monomer one at the end where the active site is located. So there's no change to the uh, number of sites that have monomer one uh, active uh, on, the, uh, on the chain because we're basically producing the same thing. Uh, similarly here, if we have an active site with monomer two at the end and add monomer two, we get again a chain with monomer two. So there's no net change with respect to uh, active sites that contain monomer one uh, at the end. But now look at these cross reactions. If we have a chain that ends in monomer one that contains the active site and we add monomer two, 
Now that's an active chain where the where the site, uh, the free radical site is associated with monomer two at the end of the chain. And similarly, if we have a chain with an active site associated with monomer two at the end and we add monomer one, now we have an active chain where the free radical site is associated with monomer one. So we can think of those as consuming or producing uh, chains with active sites associated with monomer one. And we can write that in terms of a, a differential equation or a rate equation. The rate, the net rate of production of sites, chains that are active that have monomer one at the end uh, is equal to the rate at which these sites are consumed through this first cross reaction where we add monomer two. Uh, plus the rate at which they're produced by this third reaction, this other cross reaction where we have an active chain with monomer two and we add monomer one. So therefore, uh, we can write uh, this equation and we can write a similar equation uh, for uh, the net rate of production of chains that have an active site associated with monomer two. And notice that when we write these equations, actually only the cross only the cross reactions result in a net production or consumption of active chains. So that's a key point to remember uh, as we go through this analysis.